Hello guys. So today we are going to discuss the problem segmentation fault on code chef. So the problem statement goes like there are n people number one to n. One of these people is a thief and always tells a lie. The others are honest people and always tell the truth. Person I claims that the thief is one of L I L I plus one L I plus two till R I. So he particularly gives us a range that the uh, the thief is in this particular range from L to R. Okay, so how many people could be the thief? First line will contain T, that is the number of test cases that is given to us. For each and every test case, the first line will depict the number of people that are there. And for each and every people, we are given a range L to R. Okay, so for each and every N integers, we are given two space integers L and R. So for each and every test case, uh, we have to find out k that is the number of possible thieves and we have to output the number of possible thieves uh, in the ascending order okay so let us look at the test case to begin with suppose uh, over here we are given one test case and there are four people so the first person is saying that uh, the thief is lying in the range 2 to 2 okay second person is saying that the thief is lying in the range 1 to 1 Third person is saying that the thief is lying in the range 1 to 3 and the fourth person is saying that thief is lying in the range 1 to 3. Okay, so let us map this out first of all. So this is uh, what uh, the depiction would be like first person was saying it is in this range left to R. Okay, so one is that he is uh, considering uh, this particular index to be true. Suppose one is saying uh, that two is uh, that the thief is in the range uh, is in the range two to two. So one is depicting whether particular element. is being voted on being voted or not okay so one is saying that two can be the thief two is saying one can be the thief three is saying the thief is in the range one two three so one two and three can be the thief so whatever the number of possibility Okay, whatever the range that we are giving, we are mar uh, I am marking that range with 111. Okay, so at the end, what we will be doing is we will be counting the number of votes that a particular uh, candidate gets. Let's suppose we had four candidates over here. One, two, three and four. Okay, whenever a person I that is uh, one, two, three, four is coming and he is giving us a certain range. What I am saying is uh particularly when they are giving us a range uh we'll mark all the elements at in that range to be one okay so we are considering that whenever a person is coming and telling us the range he is particularly voting for that person okay he is particularly coming and voting for that particular uh like person so if three is coming in and telling us that thief is in the range one two three he is particularly voting for one two and three okay so here now what would be the condition like let us uh, discuss the condition number one that thief always tells a lie okay so if thief always tells the lie he will not proclaim himself as the thief okay if thief always tells a lie he will not proclaim himself as the thief so first point is thief will not proclaim Thief will not proclaim himself as the thief. Okay. Like over here, 3 is saying that thief can be in the range 1, 2, 3. That is, thief can be either 1, 2 or 3. Okay, so over here, 3 is saying that he himself can be the thief. 
okay so he will not be the thief over here because a thief will never proclaim that he is himself the thief okay so first identifying point over here is this now second point over here would be now second point over here would be second point would be that for thief except himself everyone will vote him out or everyone else uh, other than the thief will say that he is the thief for example i am the thief and i am at index 4 so all the people at index 1 2 and 3 will say i am the thief so everyone at index 1 2 3 will be voting out for okay so for example consider one as at one as at example okay so one is not saying that he is himself the thief but two three and four are saying that one is the thief so one can be a potential thief over here okay so all all the people uh, remaining will say that or uh, will say that he is a thief or will vote out the thief so the votes uh, for any particular potential thief would be n minus 1 because he will not vote out himself and all the remaining people will be voting out him okay so count of votes for potential thief is equal to n minus 1. Okay. So this would be the condition, two condition that we have that would be enough to check all the potential thief over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are the two condition that we have now let us check for each and every index over here that they are particular thief or not okay so we are summing all the votes for a particular index like for a particular index one he is getting three votes two three and four have voted him out okay and for two one three and four have voted them out okay so for both one and two all the remaining people have voted them out that is count of their votes is n minus 1 where n is equals to 4 and they are not voting them out so these two are potential thief over here because they are first of all not voting themselves out and they are not proclaiming proclaiming that they are the thief and all the people remaining these particular person are voting them out okay so one was voted out from 2 3 and 4 2 was also voted out from 1 2 1 3 and 4 now let us condition uh, let us consider the condition for 4 4 is not saying that he is himself the thief so he can be the potential thief according to condition 1 but according to condition 2 the count of votes should be n minus 1 that should be equal to 3 but no one is voting out 4 over here so number of votes that 4 got was 0 so according to second condition he cannot be the thief so even one of the condition is failing he cannot be the uh, thief okay or he cannot be the potential thief so 4 cannot be the thief as well so only two answer we will get that is 1 and 2 and they have explained this only in the explanation section as well so we are getting two thieves that is 1 and 2 over here okay now let us discuss the algorithm that we can do over here or uh, algorithm that would uh, be implementing that we would be implementing over here okay so let us say that for each and every index whenever we get a range l to r so for each and every index whenever we get a range l to r we will update one in that range l to r okay so what will be the time time complexity for this like we have n operations and this can take each and every operation can take r minus l okay so over here if we look at the time complexity like n is 10 to the power 5 
test cases are also 10 to the power 5 okay and r and i are also in the range of n okay so this can go up to n square this can go up to n square because potentially we would be updating n n times as well okay and this is not what we want so this would be a brute force approach for this okay for each and every range we are updating one in that range okay so this would be a brute force approach for this this wouldn't pass all the test cases over here now let us discuss how we can optimize on this okay so our goal is we have to update one or a particular number in a given range left to right okay so what we can do is suppose we have to suppose we are given one two three and four in first operation they say that update uh, one in the range one two three let's suppose first query given to us is one two three and second query given to us is two two three now look what i am doing i'll place one at index one that is the starting position and i'll place minus one at the end ending position okay so i'll place minus one at four and for second query i will place uh, one at starting position that is two and i'll again place uh, minus one at the ending position okay so over here if we calculate the contiguous sum or the complete sum that we are having that would be one over here okay this would be one over here and now over here this would be one plus the previous sum that we were having that would be again two okay now this would again continue because we are not adding one or minus one over this index this would again be two and again over here this would be two minus the current sum okay so this would be zero so this would give us one two two and zero okay so i'll explain this for the current test case as well how this would work so this was the current test case okay so our uh, queries were 2 comma 2 over here 1 comma 1 over here and this was 1 comma 3 over here and again 1 comma 3 over here now what we are doing is we are placing uh, 1 at starting position and we are placing minus 1 at the ending position plus 1 okay so this is like A of left equals to one, A of right plus one that would be minus one. Okay, initially we are just uh, appending some values to left and right plus one. Okay, we are not doing any other operation over here. Okay. So we are just assigning uh, left test plus one and right plus one as minus one. Okay. And in third step, what we will be doing is we will be taking, we will be taking the contiguous sum or sum of all the elements so far okay so those who have an idea of dynamic programming might have heard of this term as well that is sum of integral elements or the sum so far so i'll explain this as well so for example what we have done first of first of all we look at the operations that we have done for 2 comma 2 we are assigning 2 that is the starting index as plus 1 and the ending index that is 2 plus 1 that would be 3 we are assigning that this as minus one similarly we are doing for other operation as well so one is plus one over here two is minus one that is ending range plus one again we are assigning one that is the starting position as one one over here and the ending position plus one as minus one over here now let us take the sum of each and every particular element so sum for first index would be one plus one plus one we are having three ones over here that would be three we are having uh, pl uh, plus 1 and minus 1 over here, that would be 0. Okay, now we are having minus 1 over here, that would be minus 1. And for 4, it would be minus 2. Now, if we take uh, sum of uh, all the elements so far, for example, we have to take sum of all the elements for index 3. This would be like, uh, if we take 0 base indexing, this would be 2 then. 
so suppose we have to calculate a contiguous sum till 3 okay considering one base indexing so that would be 3 plus 0 plus minus 1 that would be 2 exactly the thing that we want if you want for 4 the sub uh, like contiguous sum would be 3 plus 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 that would be 0 exactly the thing that we want okay so now how can we do this so simply we have to uh, perform a simple operation over here we have to perform a simple operation over here that would be we will write dp or let us consider this array to be a so we will write a of 0 we will write a of 0 to be a of 0 okay we will write a of 0 to be a of 0 that is we will not change the starting index or the first position and we will write for all i for all i greater than equals to 1 we will be writing a of i is equals to a of i minus 1 plus a of i so yeah this would be the formula that we would be implementing that for a of 0 that this would remain the same so a of 0 we have this is the contiguous sum that we want okay that is the final sum that we want okay so we are just replicating a of 0 that is a of 0 would not change but for a of i where i is greater than equal to 1 a of i would be a of i minus 1 plus a of i that is the previous element plus the current element okay so now uh, a of i that is a of 2 would be a of 2 plus a of 1 okay so that would be 0 plus 3 okay previous two elements like the Fibonacci series we are taking so this would be 0 plus 3 3 now so this would be minus 1 plus 3 that is we are summing with this value okay so 0 plus 3 this would give us 3 okay now minus 1 plus uh, minus 1 plus 3 this would give us 2 okay now minus 2 plus 2 this would give us 0 okay now coming to the fact why this is happening okay so for any given i for any given i what we wanted was we wanted to store the sum so far so we wanted a of 0 plus a of 1 okay continue continue till i till i over here okay so a of 0 plus a of 1 plus a of 2 till till i so just explaining on that fact as well how this is happening so for a of 0 we have kept this as a of 0 only for a of 1 we were writing this as a of i plus a of i minus 1 okay so a of i over here is a of i plus a of i minus 1 So a of 1 would be a of 0 plus a of 1 okay so a of 0 was a of 0 only okay so our updated value for a of 1 is a of 0 plus a of 1 okay so this is the combined updated value for a of 1 okay now we will write a of 2 as a of 1 plus a of 2 now a of 1 was updated that is we have updated a, a of 1 as sum of all elements so far that would be a of 0 plus a of 2 so now if we replace a of 1 as a of 0 plus a of 1 that would be a of 0 plus a of 1 plus a of 2. So a of 2 is now storing sum of elements all the elements so far that would be a of 0 plus a of 1 plus a of 2. Now similarly for a of 3 we would be writing this as a of 2 plus a of 3. So this would be a of 0 plus a of 1 plus a of 2 plus a of 3 that is sum of all elements so far because we will be replacing a of 2 by a of 0 plus a of 1 plus a of 2 okay so, so i hope the algorithm is clear that is first of all we just update left as plus 1 right plus 1 as minus 1 and we then take sum of all the elements so far okay first of all 
uh, we are just changing the elements okay that is we are appending uh, plus one or should I say plus one over here okay in each and every operation a of left would be one plus a of left okay so let me edit this only okay so this was for depiction okay like we have added three times uh one to a of left okay i'll just update the actual formula as well so this would be a of left is equals to a of left plus one okay now here we were manually uh, calculating it like we have updated three times one to a of left okay there we have to store each and everything uh such that we don't have to calculate it again and again so this would be a of right equals to a of right minus one okay and this would be continuous okay so we will be taking first of all a of left will be updated as a of left plus one and a of right plus one will be updated as a of right plus one oh uh, i missed right plus one over there minus one okay so this is the two updates that we made okay so suppose over here 2 was updated a of 2 was updated to 1 and a of 2 plus 1 that is ending plus 1 was updated as minus 1 okay so we will be first doing these operations and at the last we will be taking the contiguous sum of all the elements so far that we will be doing using a simple dynamic programming approach okay that is this is the recursive formula for that that is a of i is equals to a of i plus a of i minus 1 okay so I hope the whole algorithm is clear right now. So I want to introduce you guys to another new, new feature at CodeChef. So if you regularly practice at CodeChef and you are stuck in any of the practice problems, what you can do is you can go to any of the practice problems. Okay. And in any of the practice problems, you have ask a doubt tab over here. So you can go over here and click on this pop-up that you have from the left hand side and like simply uh, enter your username and there will be designated mentors to help you out with all of your doubts and confusions regarding that particular problems okay so i hope you will you guys will be using this going forward so coming back to the problem coming back to the problem we just have to implement this that is for each and every uh like operation or each and every update we are getting we will update a of left equals to a of left plus one and a of right plus one equals to a of right plus one minus one and all our candidates or uh, all our potential thieves would be the thieves that are not proclaiming themselves as the, as the thief okay first condition was this second condition was that number of votes that they are receiving is n minus one such that if n is equal to four number of votes a, a potential thief will receive is equal to three okay so at last let us look at the code implementation for this okay so what we are doing is initially we are taking the number of inputs okay that is the number of uh, person we have okay now we are creating an array of size n plus one okay just an extra element because uh, we can go on updating till n plus one also because what we are doing is we are updating a of left and a of right plus one okay so just an extra element as a precautionary thing okay so that we do not update uh, the element that we don't have stored okay so this is the votes array that will depict the number of votes a particular candidate has received okay so initially i have assigned this as zero to begin with and in vector of candidates i will be storing all the potential candidates that is all the thieves i will store we will be storing all the person that do not proclaim themselves as thief okay that was the first condition to be full, fulfilled okay and second condition was number of votes they are receiving or number of uh, votes or number of people that are uh, saying that he is the thief okay so that we are storing in the votes array okay so 
what we are doing is for each and every uh, iteration or n times we are getting a range okay so for each and every person we are getting a range left to right okay so this was one based indexing over here okay one two three four so they were saying two 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 one two one one two three one two three so this was one based indexing but over here we are using zero based indexing over here we are using zero based indexing for that i have done left minus minus and right minus minus okay and what i am doing is that we have discussed over here that is first of all we'll update a of left as a of left plus one and a of right plus one as a of right plus one minus one okay so this is the updates so updates to calculate or updates to append one in a given range l2r so this algorithm is known as difference array as well you can read more about it as well such that we are given us particular range left to right and we have to append uh, a certain element in that range left to right so how can we do in big o of one okay so what we are saying is if i is less than left or i is greater than right that is we are simply saying that a particular candidate is not voting himself out okay so if a particular candidate is not voting himself okay if a particular candidate is not voting himself that is he will not lie in the range that he has given that is he will either lie on the left hand left hand side of the range or he will either lie on the right hand side of the range he will not lie between the range left and right that he has given okay so if this is the case we are pushing candidates dot push back i plus one because we are using zero based indexing over here and we want to output in one based indexing okay now this is calculating the sub contiguous sum calculating the sub contiguous sum or sum of all elements so far okay so this would depict the number of votes a particular candidate candidate has received okay so we just have to iterate within the candidate we are just iterating in the candidates vector so in the candidates vector we have only the potential thieves so for each and every potential thief first of all we check uh first of all let us write what we know about the potential thief so all the candidates in the thief array or in the all the candidates in the candidates array have not voted themselves out okay so if they have not voted themselves out first condition is already fulfilled coming to second uh, condition that was all the remaining candidates have voted for them so if they have not voted for themselves only n minus 1 possibilities remain okay so n minus people that is only the remaining people can vote for them or remaining people will only uh, add one to them so this would be the case if votes for a particular candidate that is candidate minus one again converting one based indexing to zero based indexing is equals to equals to n minus one that is he has not voted for himself and all the remaining n minus one candidates has voted for him so he is a potential thief if he is a potential thief i'll just uh, push back uh, this candidate into the answer array and at last what we are uh, saying is after we have iterated through all the candidates or all the potential candidate we are having and we have pushed all our potential thieves into the answer array we are outputting first of all the size of answer okay that is the size of the potential thief array and at last i am outputting all the thieves or the potential thieves i had in the answer array so let us check as well so for this we are expecting the answer as number of thieves to be two and num and the thieves would be one and two okay so we do get the 
number of thieves to be two and potential thieves as one and two. So let us submit for all the test cases over here. Yeah, so it just passes for all the test cases. So we'll see you in the next problem. Till then, keep coding. Have a great time, guys, and thank you.